Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest twist in the ongoing saga of the Tories' illegal Covid VIP lane in which Michelle Moan, seemingly the only person involved actually being pursued by the authorities, has changed her story about how she was involved in corrupt PPE contracts. Is this a sign that the net is finally closing in around her and her husband and if so, will that net start going after others? But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So really quick background. The VIP lane was a system of using public funds to pay over the top prices for medical equipment during the height of COVID in 2020 by getting people with close links to the Conservative Party, but in far too many cases, no links to the medical uh, industry, including Conservative politicians like Michelle Moan to arrange for procurement instead of going directly to trusted suppliers. It became known as the VIP lane, but is more officially known as the high priority lane, and it was deemed unlawful by the High Court as part of a judicial review at the beginning of last year. It was deemed that the scheme gave preferential treatment to the individuals and organisations placed on the VIP lane, which, as I say, was, if you look up the official name, is the high priority lane. Now, one of the companies who received contracts as a result of this VIP lane were PPE MedPro Limited. The equipment they supplied was not entirely suitable, uh, much of it having to be rejected. Michelle Moan and her husband were linked with £203 million worth of contracts with PPE MedPro. Looking on Companies House, they became incorporated on May the 12th, 2020. So it was a classic case of the government giving a load of public money to a company that had only just formed for the pandemic to get this money. The company had no record. It had a nominal value of £100 in terms of its shares. £200 million contract for a company with next to no value in a few assets and had just newly formed. So no trading history. And there was a lot of this. It's dodgy as hell. But Michelle Moan and her husband denied their links to the company, right? Nearly two years ago, the National Crime Agency began a criminal investigation. Over a year and a half ago, several properties connected to Moan and her husband were raided, including their home on the Isle of Man. Oh, incidentally, complete coincidence, PPE MedPro Limited is listed as based in the Isle of Man. But Moan and her husband, Doug Barrowman, have now admitted their role in the company and therefore the deal. And given the nature of this two-year deception, there could be criminal charges relevant for this beyond the potential for COVID PPE fraud, which is being investigated by the NCA. Like, in fact, when journalists expose the fact that they both had involvement in the business, they've come out and said, well, the government have always been fully aware of Moan's involvement. Now, OK, I can believe that, uh, but it would mean that both they and the government have lied then. And telling lies about something which is a matter of a current, current criminal investigation is more than a little bit naughty. And even without the investigation, covering up the details of ownership of a listed company is a criminal matter. You know, my favourite tax lawyer, Dan Needle, has also suggested that because Moan and Barrowman expressed these lies through their solicitors to The Guardian whenever they publish their articles on the ongoing saga, that those solicitors now have a duty to tell their clients to write to the paper correcting the record. Needle suggests that if they refuse, those lawyers should end their association. Uh, and if Moan's lawyers haven't advised her to write to The Guardian to correct the statement, those lawyers may be behaving improperly all incredibly messy, and potentially means that the number of charges could be adding up. In terms of the admission this week, they're now saying that Moan's husband, far from having nothing to do with PPE MedPro, was actually the chairman and leader of the company group. Doug Barrowman, her husband, says that they were involved with two other companies, Loudwater Trade and Finance and Eric Bear Associates. Now, both of these companies are genuine companies, by the way. They've been trading for decades before the pandemic, so they're real companies. Are they companies which supply medical equipment then? No. The first company is listed as trading in coffee, tea, cocoa and spices. The second company... Harder to find details on because it's a Hong Kong company, I gather. But it is a distributor of televisions and radios. 
So neither have anything to do with supplying medical equipment then, never mind the medical equipment that PPE MedPro, a newly set up company in May 2020, was given £203 million of our money for. Oh, and that £203 million that the taxpayer paid for these contracts, for which we did not get at what we asked for, Barrowman took £65 million of it in pure profit. £29 million of that ended up with Moan and her children. So that's a 32% profit margin. And that's assuming there was no profit paid to anyone else. That's assuming Barrowman took all the profit and then distributed it. 32% profit margin to not even supply what we ordered. And let's be clear about this. This is not an isolated case. It's just the only one that the authorities seem to be chasing, as far as I can tell. You know, this is like £203 million, right? And I think it's something like, 113 million, it was one of the contracts that wasn't fulfilled. So although the other one will have represented poor value for public money, the actual fraud suspicion is for the 113 million. But there's billions of PPE fraud, which is known to have been committed in this way. So I don't know why there aren't more active cases, or if there are, why we don't know about them. I don't know why this one is taken as long as it is either. It's also unclear why Michelle Moan and Doug Barrowman have decided to change their story in public this week, albeit without an apology. I mean, it's a hell of a U-turn, isn't it? For Barrowman to go from instructing lawyers to insist that he had nothing to do with PPE MedPro and, and saying it's defamatory to suggest otherwise, to now say, oh, actually, I've had a look into it. It turns out I do have some involvement with that company. Turns out I was the chairman and making all their most important decisions. Got to be a reason for that. Is it because the legal net is closing around them and they now need to start telling the truth in order to stop the uh, the legal consequences becoming much more serious? Or is it the opposite? Do they feel confident that the criminal investigation has run out of steam and that they can now be comfortable admitting a few things that were basically widely known anyway? Had they always told the truth to the National Crime Agency, just not in public? And now is it a case of, right, we think that this investigation is going to die out so we can just start being honest in public now, save the hassle. I can't seem to find an answer to that one or even a reason speculation. But I'll tell you what we do know is the following. One, everyone who arranged for any company, newly formed or otherwise, to be placed on the VIP lane was unlawfully giving preferential treatment to those companies. That includes Michelle Moan. Two, Doug Barrowman, Moan's husband, made a 32% profit on the £203 million worth of government contracts that were given to his £100 company. Now, even if he'd supplied exactly what we asked for, that is terrible value for public money. We were told that the cost of PPE was so high because supply and demand during the pandemic. And yes, of course, the prices went up, but not by the amount we were paying. We paid well over the odds to fund those outrageous profits. Three, PPE MedPro used two real companies to help source the PPE. One company which sells hot beverages and another that sells television sets. No hint of an association with an actual medical supplier. Four, over half of the value of the contracts was for medical gowns, which were not deemed suitable for the NHS because they could not be considered sterile. So not only was the taxpayer money completely wasted, and actually more money wasted because we're paying for storage, but we were short of the gowns we needed. How many lives did that compromise? Five, Barrowman and Moan lied about their involvement with PPE MedPro through their solicitors. Six, this is just the most famous example of the abuses of the VIP lane. There are many others. And if the criminal justice process does not catch up soon, then the COVID inquiry inevitably will because it's going to be examining procurement in 2025. After the election, so the Tories will have limited capacity to engineer any more cover-ups. The whole thing stinks, of course, and it goes without saying it's another aspect of Tory corruption that should be a national scandal. It should be much more prominent in the mainstream media, but it isn't. So we'll have to settle for hoping that Labour boosts the funding of the National Crime Agency when they come to power and certainly tells them that if there's been any political pressure on them uh, to uh, go easy on certain investigations, that that pressure is removed immediately. It's simply not credible that the general public are happy that we are failing to pursue this level of fraud and reclaim the money. 
not just the £113 million from this case, but the billions from all the PPE fraud committed. Frankly, we should be upset that even of the supplies we did get that were what we ordered, it took a lot longer to get them and we paid over the odds because of this level of corruption. Because remember, it's not just that the money was defrauded or that we paid over the odds even when we got the stuff. The, the hole it left in PPE supplies cost lives. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.